take a look at Nonito Donaire in action tonight in our main event and just a chock full of talented competitors at 122. Sure, and Donaire's on the top of the heap, but he'd be on the top of the heap in practically any weight division he campaigned in. That's why he's one of the very best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in boxing. I agree with Roy. He's much closer to number one than people realize. Nishioka, the most accomplished in the division, a fine fighter, all-around good fighter, southpaw. Rigandau, speaking of Southpaw, is really exceptional boxer, puncher, two-time gold medalist. Moreno, uh, a tremendous boxer, also has a big fight coming up with Morris, who's an excellent pressure fighter. Darchinian back on the scene after his tremendous knockout win on Boxing After Dark a couple weeks ago. And Jorge Arce is still around, still making great action fights. Well, we are so looking forward to seeing Nonito Donaire in action. It's almost like you need to take a deep breath after oh. the after the Rios fight against Alvarado, but the Donaire Nishioka fight could have the same kind of compelling action. Roy, we started the telecast with you talking about Nonito Donaire and all the tremendous things he brings to the table. What about Nishioka from Japan and some of the things about his game that you like? Well, the thing I like about him most is that he's a very quick guy. He hasn't lost in over eight years. That's saying a lot. This is a guy that doesn't really remember how it feels to lose. So when you got that, you got a will that has to be broken. Not to mention that he has decent power and he happens to be a southpaw. So with that being said, I'm looking for a great showing by Nishioko. Well, it should be a lot of fun. Scheduled for 12 rounds. We heard from some of the top boxing writers about the Rios Alvarado matchup. They're just as excited about our main event, Donaire against Nishioka. Nonito Donaire as a fighter is elite level, high caliber, pound for pound level talent. He's slick, he's fast, he's got good power. He's really a complete fighter. And the things he can do are not necessarily fundamentally grounded or sound, but they are, are just natural. And that's what he is, he's a natural talent. Nishioka, I think, is your classic Japanese fighter. He's well conditioned. He's fundamentally sound. He's very, very tough with a great sense of honor. I think, unlike the previous three opponents of Nonito Donaire, is that he's actually going to try to win. He's the guy that American fans and American judges have never seen before. He's a guy who's 36 years old. He's not the one who people are tabbing to be the future star of boxing. What we have here is a storied old veteran perhaps coming to the twilight of his career against a young fighter that's right into his physical prime that believes that his best is yet to come. Anytime you have two guys who have strong belief in themselves and their ability, who are widely regarded as among the top fighters in the world, but they both have great resumes. But what I like about the fight is that if you talk to both guys, they have a burning desire to fight each other. And I think Nishioka Donaire is going to be a high intensity, elite level chess match. That's what it's going to be. So we're set for tonight's main event. At 122 pounds. From the Home Depot Center in Carson, California, over 8,000 strong and electric atmosphere here this evening on HBO's Boxing After Dark. And there is Toshiaki Nishioka. 36 years of age, made seven defenses of his Super Bantamweight Championship. Started boxing at the age of 11. He was just small for his age, and his father encouraged him to try boxing. Didn't really like it when he first started boxing, but Roy, he grew to love it, and what a champion he's been. Yeah, he's been an awesome champion. Learned how to fight, basically sparring as an amateur. Only had 12 amateur fights, but he went from gym to gym and did a lot of sparring. His father owns a restaurant in Japan, and even his father wondered, Max, where his extreme athleticism came from, but he certainly has taken it into the sport of boxing and had a wonderful career over 292 rounds in a pro career that started in 1994. Look, if, if you have extreme athleticism and you're 122 pounds and you're tough enough to box, you know, you chose the right profession. This guy hasn't lost in eight years. Noshiaka was very, very tight-lipped when we asked him about some of the strategies he would need against Donaire. He said, you'll find out Saturday night. Well, that moment has arrived for Toshiaka Nishioka. And there is 29-year-old Nonito, the Filipino Flash Donaire. He said Toshiaka was the guy he wanted all along 
Max, take a look at Donaire's last couple fights. Decision wins. Not as dominant as we had seen. A problem or not? Well, look, fighting in a new weight class, he beats Vasquez 10 rounds to two and has some absurd split decision. That was a, it should have been unanimous. It was a dominant performance. And that was with a bad hand. He then fractures Matabula's jaw, who's six feet tall and one of the best fighters in the division, but doesn't box as carefully as people would like, so he's criticized for that. The bar is set so f high for him. He's set the bar so high with his performances, it's almost impossible to live up to it. All right, we're set for tonight's main event. Once again, we send you to the ring and Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the HBO Boxing After Dark main event of the evening 12 rounds of boxing for the wbo junior featherweight championship of the world also on the line the vegan wbc diamond belt presented by bob arams top ranked boxing and taken promotion sponsored by Takate con character sanctioned by the california state athletic commission chairman john frierson WBO President Francisco Paco Barcarcel. At ringside, the three judges scoring will be Ralph McKnight, Carlos Ortiz, and Fritz Werner. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, working for the 141st time as a world title referee, Raul Cai Sr. And now, for the thousands in attendance, and the millions watching around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner with head trainer, Yochi Kasai. Official weight, 121.8 pounds. His professional record, 39 victories, including 24 knockouts with four defeats and three draws. And he is undefeated for the last 16 fights over a span of eight years. From Amagasaki, Hyogo, Japan, the challenger, former WBC, super bantamweight champion of the world, Toshiyoki Speed King. Nishioka! And fighting out of the red corner with his head trainer, former world champion Robert Garcia. Wearing red and officially weighing 121.6 pounds. His professional record, 30 fights, 29 victories, including 18 knockouts with only one defeat, and he is undefeated over the last 11 years. From General Santos City, Philippines, the three division, three-time world champion, the reigning defending WBO junior featherweight champion of the world, the Filipino Flash, Nonito. Bonito, champion. Gentlemen, I gave you instructions downstairs. Remember, protect yourselves at all times. Keep punches up. Remember, bone here on up. So punches here are fine. Okay? Shake hands. Good luck to both of you. In our first fight in Rio San Alvarado, you saw the best of the blue collar, blood and guts warrior side of boxing. In this fight, Especially with Nito Donaire, but also with Nishioka. We expect to see the sublime, the upper echelon of Ready. skill Ready. and speed Ready. and power that the sport has to offer. Round number one begins. Each boxer with six first round knockouts in their careers. Donaire, lightning quick. With that left hand. See Nishioko already over respecting that left hook by putting his left hand up so high that Donnell won't even see a shot to throw the hook. 
That should open up Donaire straight right in his overhand right though. Roy, what are some of the things that Toshiaki Nishioka needs to do in the early part of this fight to get a rhythm going in the direction that he needs it to be? But the one thing he's doing wrong right now is he's not jabbing at all. Just keeping that hand stationary is going to allow Nonito to have basic target practice at it. That was a jab. And after the table center of Rios Alvarado, the fans here in Carson, California, have no interest in any fainting. <laughs> <laughs> or posing and just holding your hands up. These are two highly skilled fighters, but they both scored plenty of knockouts. Donaire more of the one-punch variety, but I've seen Nishioka get guys in trouble with one shot, too. Nishioka has been down three times in his career. Donaire has not. It's funny for the fans in attendance, it's almost like, how could you expect to match what you just saw, at least to start? This fight will open up. I mean, I don't think that I would have taken a main event behind those two. <laughs> <laughs> Nishioka believes Donaire's left hook is what he has to watch for. Donaire believes Nishioka's open for that shot, at least heading into this fight. But let's not forget, against Sidorenko and other top fighters, Donaire has starched him with a straight right hand. Yeah, well, what Donaire should do right now is throw a straight right hand to the body some. Since Nishioka has that left hand, uh, has his right hand so high on his face trying to guard the left hook, make him reach for the right hand, then hit him with an overhand right. The combination from Donaire fell short. Nishioka, to this point, according to CompuBox, has thrown a whopping seven punches in the round. The Donaire's 39. He's just trying to get comfortable and get close to Donaire and see what he sees before he opens up. Here we see one of the reasons Donaire's been less seconds, than scintillating recently. His opponents are so wary of his power, they don't give him a lot to hit. He has to start going to that showboat mode to try to create openings somewhere to bait his opponent. End of round one. Okay, we're gonna pick him apart little by little. Look, look, he's got his right hand glued up here because he knows that he knows that left hook is coming. Let's break him down a little by little with a straight right to the body and upstairs. Okay? Yes. That way he's gonna start dropping that we start dropping his hand, alright? Okay? That jab, just keep touching him. Upstairs, downstairs, jab, 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 and set up the straight right. Down the middle. I see the left hook. Okay? Yeah. I wanna throw the left. Okay, watch out for the left. Okay. That's good. You're doing good. Water. Boy, it's hard to fathom that a guy could get through the first round of Nishioka's skill level and only throw eight punches. Well, he's out there trying to fill out the process right now. He hasn't fought a fighter that it, that probably with the skill level of a Donito Donaire, so, you know. And Robert Garcia, the trainer of Donaire, was thinking along with you, Roy. He said, look, he's got that right hand glued up to his head. Let's throw a straight right hand. That's there. exactly right. You got to open up something with the left hand. Look, Nishioka's used to winning. It's been eight years since he lost. But he is 36 years old. He contemplated retirement before this fight. Omar Narvaez was undefeated with a bunch of title defenses. He wouldn't open up against Donaire. And Nishioka so far seems intimidated by Donaire's, Donaire's power. Yeah, but he's waiting to get a good shot in before he throws anything. He's kind of smart like that. He's trying to catch Donaire in the middle of a punch and try to land his own big shot to see what happens. Nishioka. Very, very tentative right now. And he can be a high volume punching fighter. Yeah, but in this fight, he's more worried about Donaire's power. So he's respecting it so much that he's not punching. There's a good jab from Nishioka. 
And Nishioka, when he throws more punches, it'll tend to be as the fight heats up and his conditioning starts to show. I think it's a smart tactic that he's using because he's not enabling no, 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 no. Lonito no, no, no. to land to land the no, left push hook. Don't push his head down. That you cause that, but okay. Don't no push his head down. All right, let's go. Okay. Let's go. Shake hands. I don't know if they bang right, knees. The air flexing him. that right knee. Roy. You know, Donaire's got all the weapons and all the tools and all the speed, but Nishioka's fighting so defensively. He's part of Nishioka's thinking here to get him frustrated and make him make a mistake where I can counter it. Exactly. Make him make a foolish mistake. Make him get over anxious because he knows that the crowd now wants to see activity. That's what they seen in the first fight. So if you can make him make a foolish mistake, you can try to counter and catch him with a big shot. And that's what Nishioka is trying to do right now. Yeah, Nishioka's landed another good jab. In spite of what Donaire says, that he's only worried about the guy in front of him and all this, I think he's aware of his pound-for-pound -pound status. He's nearing the top. He's aware of guys like Andre Ward and spectacular performances, and how he needs his own big performances to stay in that conversation. So when the fight is dull, he wants to do something to enliven it. Stop. And that's the end of round two. On a gorgeous night, once in a while, Southern California. Step in with the double jabs, and look, his guard is right here on the look, right here. So you could land the, the right, the right hook over behind his gloves. Okay? You see, you know what I'm talking about, right? He's right here. So land the right hook behind his glove. Once in a while, not all the time. I don't want him to catch it. Do it once in a while, and you get him. Okay? It's a nice short one. A nice short. You're doing good. Be patient. You're doing good. So we begin round number three for Nonito Donaire and Toshiaki Nishioka. In the last round, according to CompuBox, Donaire's connects were all power shots, 11 of 27. Steps in with that right hand that Robert Garcia asked for. Another there, right hand. There's a shot that I've been looking for all night because he's trying to move his left hand, I mean his right hand to the fan. No, it's his left hand. But he's not moving that right hand at all. So go over the left hand, the one that he is moving. When Donaire steps to his right and achieves that outside position with his foot, that, that straight right hand is very difficult to defend for Nishioka. And Nishioka is partially blinding him on self, his own self with that right hand staying so close to his head. Because he needs to defend against the left hook? Well, he's afraid of the left hook. <laughs> When we asked him in the fighter meeting what was Donaire's best weapon, he said, <laughs> left hook. Roy, when you were arguably the best fighter in the world, there was no argument at the time that right. I recall. But when you had a guy in front of you that was playing defensive like this, how, how did you not get frustrated? How does Donaire combat against getting frustrated? Well, it's very difficult not to get frustrated, but there was one time I had an actual softball in front of me that did this to me. So what I started doing was beating his right shoulder. And I beat his right shoulder so bad that they had to stop the fight because of injury to his right shoulder. So if I was Donaire, I'd be hooking his right shoulder right now until he takes it down so I can see the chin. Well, let's see if Donaire does some of that. He has used some more of those lead right hands. Nishioka just not, he's not throwing any punches. He's thrown 11 so far on the round. Well, he's fighting very smart. He's not trying to get caught with a shot. He's trying to wait for a great opportunity to catch Donaire or make Donaire want to appease to the crowd. And if he can make him do that and Donaire opens up, then maybe he can land a good lucky shot. Yeah, we already know that a, a world-class fighter, a belt holder, a champion, if he's intent on neutralizing Donaire, can last the distance with him. 
so far from Nishioka. I was expecting a little bit more of a will to try to see if he could actually win the fight. to reset, throws that right hand, misses with his right cross. As we come to the final seconds of round Stop number three. Nonito Donaire, pound for pound, one of the best in the world. Stop. Born in the Philippines, moved to the U.S. at age 10. A star in his homeland of the Philippines, now dabbling in a movie career. It's called Ang Palada Ang Nagbuot, means our faith decides. It's about a story of, of, you know, what a lot of people go through, you know, the hardship of life, you know, and I, I really believe in that story. I mean, there's comedy, there's, there's drama, but mainly the story of it all is, is, is how people just get through hardship. The most difficult thing for me was the crisis. You need to be a different person for it, you know. You need to be this person. And to be able to cry, I had to come up with my own ways of saying things. So I took it and I was able to do it. I, I enjoy making the movies, you know. It's something that, you know, I, I like doing, you know. It's something that I enjoy doing and I would definitely do it and again in the future. And there is wife, Rachel Donaire, anxiously watching ringside as Nonito begins round number four. And not only is her husband a champion, but soon to be movie star in the Philippines. As we check in with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Okay, Bob, I've got a three to nothing. 30 to 27, Nonito Donaire. I mean, as I see this fight, he's doing all the punching. The problem with Nishioka is he's not punching enough. And you know, Bob, I've been watching that weird right hand all night. You know, the way he holds that right hand. It's very strange. He doesn't seem to snap it an awful lot. You know, and I don't see where it's a big uh, uh, defensive uh, maneuver, you know, keeping it that high. I think you ought to keep it at a normal level and throw it more. Three to nothing, Donaire. Can't argue with that, Harold. And they're just kind of going about his business right now. Trying to find that opening to really hurt Nishioka, but Nishioka not giving him any opportunities. Nishioka, it seems, came into this fight believing that Donaire was better than him, and I guess Donaire has done nothing to dissuade him. Roy, from your time in the ring, when you were in a guy that was looking to survive, and you hear the crowd whistling and hooting, you know it's not for you, per se, but does it affect you? Uh, as a disciplinarian, no, it doesn't affect you, because you know that your job is to remain disciplined and do what it is that you train to do. So Donaire right here is landing some good body shots, as you see, landing a good straight right to the head every now and then, and that's all he can get. So just take what you can get until the store opens up. Box, gentlemen, it's box. up with a combination there. Nishioka back to that defensive shell. There's the hand speed of Donaire. What you have to remember is that uh, Nishioka hasn't lost in eight years. He didn't go that long without a loss by being stupid. He's very smart, very uh, effective with his movement, and he's very defensive. He's trying to avoid the left hook by all means necessary. Donaire steps in with a combination. Punch is just starting to show an effect on Ishioka's face. Yeah, especially his right eye. Stop at the bell. He's swelling underneath that right eye. Stop. Another clearly controlled round for Nonito Donaire. October 23rd, catch the premiere of the next installment of Real Sports for a profile on former football star turned daytime talk show host Michael Strahan. November 17th, our four-part series 24-7. Pacquiao Marquez 
kicks off will begin the run up to the fourth fight between Manny Pacquiao and Juan Manuel Marquez with a look back at the three fights that forged one of boxing's greatest rivalries. Toshiaki Nishioka's wife Miho sitting ringside. We asked Toshiaki about Miho attending his fight. She said she gets nervous, but she made the trip. Not a lot to get excited about to this point. So we begin round number five of the scheduled 12 rounder. Nino Donaire opens up with a combination. I do think what we're seeing here from Donaire is he's been good to his word, Roy, about going back to boxing. And if the knockout comes, so be it. Um, last couple fights, it looked like he tried to force things a little more. And so he didn't have the success he's having tonight against a survival-minded fighter. Yeah, you're right there. And uh, the only thing you got to remember is that Nishioko is not worried about nothing but trying to land one power shot. So by him boxing like he's doing, it's enabling him to build up a heck of a lead on the scorecards. And that's what you want to do in case something does happen. And Shioka landed a jab. Donaire followed with the right hand. We have not seen the frustration from Donaire that we've seen in some of his other fights. Triples up the jab, shoots the right to the body, steps in with a power shot that just missed. So far, he's totally outclassing a top fighter, you know, as usual. Watch your feet, guys, watch your feet. But Nishioko is forcing him to dig in his arsenal a little bit to throw combinations that he normally doesn't throw, making him change up the combinations because of that right hand staying so high up on his head. So Donnell can't hit him with the first punch or the second punch. Usually he hits him with the third or the fourth punch. Unless it's a pop shot like that right hand was. That's a good jab from Nishioka. Donnell steps in with a combination. Good jab by Donaire. No, no, no. Pick him up. Pick him up. Nishioka okay. low with that punch. Sign of frustration. I'm just happy he threw a punch. Nishioka is doing a little bit more in this round. He's moving forward a little bit more. Tried to step in with his left Stop hand. Stop. End of round five. Use your feet. Move. Breathe. Breathe. Hey. Breathe. Hey. Don't switch it over there. Why don't you go to the crowd, okay? You keep doing what you're doing. See, we the jab, right hook. Keep your hands in a nice strong position, okay? So I'm going to drop them a little bit towards the other side. Keep your hands up and start lifting. Take it off. Punch off from there, okay? Hands in good position. That's how you're going to land all your combinations. Once you let him go, no, it's all you. Let him. Back in the corner. Go, Fox. Well, Nishioka threw a fight high 21 punches in the last round, according to Coffee Box. Landed six of them. Donaire hit on 11 of his 29 power shots as we begin round number six. A 22 pounder throwing 21 punches in a round. Not going to get it done. Call survival. Yeah. 
But then what's his point, boy? The, to say that, well, I didn't get knocked out by the left hand? This is by the left hook. Because I wouldn't be surprised if the left uppercut still doesn't catch him later on in the fight. But he won't get caught by the left hook no time soon. See that left uppercut right there? Mm -hmm. That's on, the shot because he's cue. holding that right hand up. On cue. Backs away from that left hand. <laughs> that time, Donaire missed with the uppercut. Nishioka comes back with the left. Good left uppercut. Yeah, from the look on Donaire's face, he's glad when Nishioka opens up because it affords him targets, you know, counter-punching opportunities. Great right hand by Donaire. Nishioka landed a left hand in the body. Nishioka seems like he's starting to warm up a little bit. Well, he certainly had ample time to warm up. <laughs> We're in round six. It's cold outside. Nishioka down. Short Three, shot inside. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Walk to me. Donaire steps in. There it is again. Trying oh. to finish him. Left hand from Nishioka. Combination from Nishioka. Donaire hooks inside. Short and left again from Donaire. Right hand over the top, straight right hand. Nishioka says, bring it on. Left hand from Donaire. Now Nishioka showing something. End of six. Why is he so mad? Good work. Breathe. Hey, go Hey. 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 Good job. See, because the Shoka's holding that left hand, right hand so high on his head, Donaire got smart and came under it, and it came right between both hands with the left uppercut. Beautiful shot to sit Nishioka down for a second. Once again, you see him with the right hand high, and Nonito comes right up under that right hand with a beautiful left uppercut to the chin. I, th I think part of that is Nishioka got more aggressive that round. And so there were so Donaire, there was just more heavy leather exchange, and that's what happens when you exchange with Donaire. All right, let's check in with Harold Letterman as we begin round seven. Okay, Bob, boy, we started to get a fight there for a minute. <laughs> Six to nothing. 60 to 53, Londino Donaire. You know, he won the first five rounds easily. The sixth round, just like Max said, Nishioka opened up and got dropped. You got to give Nonito Donaire an extra point in round six for knocking the man off his feet. Six to nothing, 60 to 53, Nonito Donaire. I like what I saw from Nishioka after the knockdown. He figured, look, if I'm going to lose anyway or get hit hard anyway, might as well make a fight of it. That's exactly right. And he really threw some pretty good punches at Donaire while Donaire was trying to get him. Some really good punches. Yeah, that's a very dangerous time for a fighter. So after a waltz through five and a half rounds, Nishioka decided to open it up. Right hand from Donaire. Nishioka steps in with the left. Donaire counters with his left. They've both taken each other's bombs very well since the knockdown. Good body shot. 
Yeah, after he doubled up with the jab, did no now. And there thumps that right hand. And see, even though Nishioka is blocking oh. the punches. Flash of heads there as Nishioka tried to throw his left. No problem. Let's go. Box. Even though Nishioka is blocking those punches, he's feeling the true power behind him. And it's causing him to stay in that defensive stance. Jab from Nishioka. Donaire jumped in with his power shot. And this jab from Nishioka. Yeah, he does have quick hands. You can understand why he hasn't lost in eight years. Quick hands and some pop. You think those headbutts are accidental, Roy? Well, you know, when we have a softy and a left and a right handed fighter to fight, usually we do have accidental headbutts. So, yes, I think that was totally accidental. There's that jab again. Ten seconds, stop at the bell. Stop at the bell. Stop. And of round number seven. Boxing after dark from Home Depot Center in Carson, California. There's Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. working for Mexican TV, along with Marco Antonio Barrera. There's Gennady Golovkin, who have recently seen on Boxing After Dark. Mikey Garcia, one of the top featherweights in the world. Checking out the action ringside. Great trainer, Freddie Roach. And there is Oscar Valdez. Mexican Olympian checking things out. Valdez performed very well in the London Games. Hands in strong position like we practice. Condition good? Yeah? Okay, no, let's go. Okay? Let's stop picking it up. Let's go. Let's go. Rachel Donair checking out her husband, Nonito. Toshiaki Nishioka. Been busier over the last couple of rounds. As we begin round number eight, scheduled for 12. Nishioka down in the sixth. Bob Papa, Roy Jones Jr., Max Kellerman, and Harold Letterman ringside for HBO's Boxing After Dark. No Nito Donaire putting his 122 pound belts on the line against Toshiaki Nishioka of Japan. Nishioka has not lost in eight and a half years. 39, four and three with 24 knockouts. Donaire 29 and 1 with 18 knockouts. Pound for pound, one of the best in the world. Donaire, you see, doesn't have an impenetrable defense. Roy, you've compared him to you in your prime, and he has some of He reminds me also of Sugar Ray Leonard a bit in the sense that Ray would mix it up and so you could hit him even at his best, and Donaire seems to me the same way. Yeah, they don't move a lot on their feet like I did. I use my legs as my primary source of defense. They don't. They use their hands and their shoulders as their primary source of defense, so they definitely are capable of being hit more when they open up the punch. I was less likely to be hit because I had the speed of a cat, but I used my legs as my defensive weapons. But as a result, they were also really crowd-pleasing. Ray Leonard was really crowd-pleasing uh, at times because of that, because of his willingness to fight that way. Most definitely, and because of the hand speed. Counter right hand from Donaire after Nishioka lands the left. Donaire shoots a straight right. Good left hand by Nishioka. Yeah, and he steps in with a little combination to the chin of Donaire. Donaire answers back of the right hand. Boy, what is Nishioka seeing in which, as defensive as he was through the first five, he has opened up a little more offensively? Well, he hasn't lost in eight years. He doesn't really want to lose tonight. 
I mean, don't make no mistake about it. He is truly a winner. He didn't come all the way over here to lose the fight. So now that he's at it, he's feeling like, since I'm in here, I'm getting hit. Wow. Uh, there they go, opening up power shot. Nishioka is throwing home run bombs, and he's willing to take them to try to land his own. It's not a bad idea. Not bad at all. And Donaire has to be careful walking in and throwing Ten that left uppercut, up too. So Nishioka starting to let that left hand go here near the Stop end of round down. number eight. Okay, see when you when you said those three punch three punch combinations, you're landing, you're hurting them really bad. But you know what you gotta do? You gotta sit on your on your pat, pat your feet and bend your knees, and that's when your three punch combinations land, and that's when you got the power. Left, left, uh -huh. left. Mito, mito. Mito left. Just like just like There's practice. No left straight. <laughs> Yes. He's seen Oshiro there, coming right behind with a counter left hook, followed by a straight right hand on Oshioko. He thought he was out of range, but he wasn't. But he's so com so concerned about the power of the left hook that he's leaving himself open open for the straight right. Fox. Round of nine underway for Nomiko Donaire and Koshiaki Nishioka. According to CompuBox in the last round, Nishioka's 44 punches thrown, his high water mark in the fight, and his nine connects his high water mark. And Donaire gets flipped down. No knockdown, says Roel Kai Sr., the referee. I've never seen that before. I've never seen a guy do a 360 in a being pushed down, spun down. I think their knees may have banged. You know, early in the fight, Donaire's right knee bang too. You're wondering about late power. Noshiaki has three knockouts in his career after the eighth round. Donaire has none. Nishioka now with purposeful aggression, trying to get in position to punch. Pumps out that jab again, does Nishioka. Left hand to the body by Donaire scored. That one was blocked. Nishioka steps in with a combination. And this is what Nishioka starts to do around the oh. oh, down goes Nishioka with a counter shot. Four, five, six, seven. You sure you're okay, eight. Coming into this fight, he's been down three times in his career, down twice, and now the referee steps in and stops it. And that was the... That was the straight right hand that Donaire promised. Nishioka's corner jumped in to protect him. Now, the corner jumped in. We're told they stopped it. Everybody else, let, let the doctor see the fight. And Onito Donaire, win number 30, stoppage number 19. English. This yoga does not speak English. He speaks English. He speaks Spanish. He speaks English. Yeah. Being told that the corner of Nishioka stepped in to stop the fight. Get confirmation on that in just a second.
Here's the counter shot from Donaire, Roy. Yeah, he allowed Nishoko to open up some by backing up. And once Nishoko did, he made himself wide open for the left, for the straight right hand, which he really had been all night long had he been on the attack. But because he was staying back so much, it was harder for Nonito to hit him with it. Now he's bringing the pressure, bringing his face to Nonito, and Nonito just comes right out of that faint with a straight right hand. Bam. Right on the chin, down goes Nishioka. Second time in the fight, Nishioka was down. Here's Raul Caiz, senior, giving the count. Now he looks over, gets ready to begin the action, and lets it continue, and then steps in and stops it. So Nonito Donaire with his 30th win. Just on a kind of pedestrian first five rounds that Nishioka elected to make it more of a fight in the sixth round. Nishioka got dropped in the sixth and then dropped again in the ninth. Anytime he chose to truly fight back, he got dropped. For the official time of the stoppage, once again, we send it up to Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Raul Caiz Sr. steps in and calls a halt to the bout. The official time, of one minute, 54 seconds of round number nine. The winner by TKO victory and still the WBO junior featherweight champion of the world, the Filipino Flash. Nonito Donnie. Nonito Donaire finishes off Toshiaka Nishioka in the ninth round as we take a look at the total punch numbers in the fight. You see that Donaire landed 134 of 485. Nishioka just not busy enough in this fight. He only averaged throwing 22 punches per round. In the power category, again, dominance by Donaire. That was the key. And of course, that straight right hand in the ninth round finishes off Nishioka. So Nonito Donaire picks up win number 30. He's in the ring with Max Kellerman. Nonito, how do you feel about this performance tonight? Well, first of all, I want to thank everybody that's here. Uh, people from Carson, LA, San Diego, especially the Bay Area and Vegas, you know, and all the people from Japan who came up, you know, fly over here and give support to Nishoka and this boxing. Domo arigato gozaimasu and to all the, the fans, thank you. Um, how do you feel about the fight? Nishoko is a great fighter. That's why we're kind of weary about it because I know, we know that we can end the fight with one punch. And that's what happened. We just want to make that mistake. And if we make that mistake, they'll get us. And that's what happened. He made the mistake to reach in. I got him with the uppercut. My hand was hurting a little bit. So I couldn't finish him off. And then I have to go with my right. The left hand was hurt. The left hand for the uppercut. That's why I stopped throwing it and started to slow down in the middle. It wasn't because I was tired. It was because I needed a different strategy. Narvaez was a top fighter. He didn't really try to win. Nishioka's a top fighter. Until he got dropped, it didn't look like he was really trying to fight you. Once you dropped him, he started fighting you and you knocked him out. Why won't these guys engage with you? Well, when you do engage and you open up yourself, Nonito is a surgeon. I can pick up my part, and then once that surgeon comes in, the demolition man comes in and knock people out. But it did seem as though tonight you were taking what he gave you, not trying to do too much, as may have been the case recently, was that a strategy coming in? Tell us about it. Um, like I said, going back to the rule, choosing that jab, using the speed. And that's what we wanted to do. You know, I'm not completely there yet, but, you know, the leg was starting to move. The combination started to flow. But, you know, we need more. And we always get better every time we fight a good fighter like Nishioka. All right, you told us to watch for the right hand. And tell us what you see. Well, people thought that I was, you know, I was just playing possum to see what he'll do. And I wanted to open him up and time that jab like I always did, you know, working with Brian Swartz, my other coach. And that's what exactly what happened, was time that straight like we did, and, and we made it happen, and that was it. Okay, Nonito, these top fighters at 122 so far are not 
really challenging you. It's not a question as to who's going to win the fight. You're dominating them, with the exception of maybe of Matabula, whose jaw you fractured. Who are you looking at right now as the target? All of the above. At this point, I got the guy that I thought was the best in this division, and that was Nishoka. Anybody, anybody, it's free for all. Whoever wants it, let's go. There are fighters in your division with high profile, guys who people think would give you a good fight, but you're not with the same promoters. Does that mean you will move up and out of the division, or do you want to fight those fighters? If we can make those fights happen, you know, I've waited for a long time, and I know how it is to be waiting for somebody. If we can't make it happen, I want to move up in the division, and that's up to Bob and, and HBO and you guys. You always get a little annoyed at me when I bring up Rigandau, no, you know. but he is with you, your promoter, and hardcore fight fans would love to see it. Listen, Max, I'm just giving you a hard time. You know how it is. You know, I love you, man, but, um, you know, to tell you, to, to be honest with you, like I said, you know, I believe that he needs more guys to make me excited. You I mean, I have to be excited for the fight or else I, I'm gonna get bored. Like, have you seen the last few fights? You know, this fight, I was so aware, so focused because I know what this guy have and I want to feel that going in the ring that, that this guy is challenging me and I, I, I have, and I have confidence that this guy is a good fighter. They got to prove themselves for me to go at it. Thanks, Nonito, and congratulations. Thank you, HBO and Top Rank. Thank you guys for this opportunity. All right, guys, so we thought in our first fight we would have a fight of the year type fight. Maybe Rios Alvarado would be hyphenated tonight the way, after tonight, the way Ward and Gaddy and Corrales and Castillo have been hyphenated into one name because of their great fights. And we were on our way to getting it when referee Pat Russell stopped the fight because he saw a defenseless fighter against the ropes. Was Alvarado defenseless? His hands were still up. They weren't down at his sides as Castillo were when Corrales had him against the ropes in their first fight. Were we robbed tonight of seeing something cross over from special to epic? Or were we saved tonight from seeing something cross over from special to tragic. This is always the question in boxing in these kind of fights. But however you slice it, I'm glad we got to see that fight tonight. Bob? No question about it, Max. And you alluded to the Brandon Rios, Mike Alvarado fight. Let's take a look at the highlights from that epic battle in the scheduled 10 rounder at 100 and 40 rounds with referee Pat Russell giving the final instructions. And one of the things that Alvarado was able to do was use his jab to set up some of his power shots. For Rios, it was a zero-sum game. It was all or nothing. He was going to dig in with his power shots at times. He rocked Alvarado, but Alvarado had moments of his own where he was able to step in with his power shots and stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the toughest guys in the sport, and Alvarado proved that he, too, is in that category. Rios, with a smile of satisfaction, he says this kind of boxing's his addiction, but in round number seven, that right hand hurt Mike Alvarado, and that's where referee Pat Russell stepped in and stopped the bout in the seventh round, a TKO win for Brandon Rios. Well, as we conclude tonight's show, we'd like to take this moment here at HBO to say thanks to a special and vital member of our HBO team, director Mike Sheehan. Mike Sheehan's career spans over 30 years at HBO. For 18 years, he was a vital part of HBO's Wimbledon coverage, serving as the director of the highlight show, as well as the main show from Wimbledon. Mike also spent 15 years working on HBO's Inside the NFL, doing everything from studio tech to stage manager, camera, but wore many hats at HBO, eventually ascending to the role of director on HBO's Boxing After Dark. Well, Mike Sheehan is now moving on to fabulous things in his career and many other opportunities. But from all of us here at HBO, we'd all like to say thank you to Michael because Michael's kindness and his encouraging hand along the years has helped many people at HBO. And Mike, we wish you the best of luck in what has been a spectacular career that will continue. You've touched us all at HBO. Buddy, thank you for helping everybody be better at what we do. Well, HBO's Boxing After Dark resumes on October the 27th. We have a triple header for you featuring highly regarded prospect Thomas DeLorme of Puerto Rico taking on Carlos Abrego of Argentina. Rounding out the card, Mauricio Herrera faces off with Kareem Mayfield and Miguel Vasquez defends his lightweight title against Marvin Quintero. 
So for our entire crew, I'm Bob Papa. Thank you for being with us for this edition of Boxing After Dark. This has been a presentation of HBO Sports. On the next box.